It seems like just last week I was reviewing Mud Crutch 1. Oh, wait, I was. Yes, I can. To you, babe. So, hello and yes, welcome back to another album review already, of course. And we're on with the album Mud Crutch 2 today. Um, as promised, I've been saying a week now that um, um, the two new releases, Eric Clapton's I Still Do and Mud Crutch's 2, um, both album reviews are coming. Um, I uploaded Eric Clapton's I Still Do yesterday. Um, and I'm already back to film my album review for Mud Crutch 2. Whether I upload this today, the day after I uploaded Eric Clapton's I Still Do or not, I don't know. I might upload it the following day just to give that video a bit of breathing time. But, um, oh, pardon me. But yeah, we are finally here to review, of course, the new Tom Petty album. Um, under the name Mud Crutch, of course. Um, so then, of course, um, we're going to be doing a usual in this review. Going to give you a bit of information about the album. We're going to go over each track individually and score them out of ten. Um, then I'm going to show you the album, um, my copy divine record, and we're going to mark the artwork out of 10. Then we're going to add up all them scores, divide them by the total number of scores given, um, which will give us our overall mark for the album. We're going to head over to the album ranking board, put it on the album ranking board, see where the album ranks, and that will be it for this review. So then, of course, let's get started. So then, if you guys checked out my Mud Crutch um, 1 review for this beautiful album here, you'll know that I absolutely love their first album. It got an 8.5 out of 10 overall. It's a fantastic album, which came out in 2008. Um, this is Mud Crutch's second release, of course, on the 20th of May 2016, the same day as Eric Clapton's I Still Do and Bob Dylan's Fallen Angels. Um... Second album by the band, obviously, hence the big number two. They didn't try to do a George Harrison with the Travelling Wilburys and go, oh, let's skip number two, we'll go straight to number three. Um, no, they went in with number two here, so well done, Tom. Don't try and confuse us, good boy. <laughs> and um, chart positions, hasn't got chart position in the US yet. I'm kind of hoping it might do pretty good in the US, being it, it is an American band. You know, it's always good to see people um, doing good on their own ground. You know, it's a bit like Eric here, because, you know, I've been studying the chart positions lately. Um, to see where Eric falls, and it's good to see him doing good in the UK, considering, you know, this is his home country, it's good to see him doing good from where he's from. Um, so I hope Mud Crutch does good in the US, because it really didn't do very good here. Hit number 62 in the UK, um, generally definitely needs to be a top 10 album, it really does, and I think if it had Tom Petty's name on it would, because Tom Petty's last release, Hypnotic Eye here, which actually had his name on, did hit number one in the UK. So I think if it had Tom's name on, this would definitely be a top 10 album. But anyway, unfortunately it falls short because it has the Mud Crutch name on it. Um, but anyway, um, their first album hit number eight in the US. So I do think this will do a lot better in the US than it will in the, than it has done in the UK. I hope so at least. Um, anyway, I already covered this when I reviewed Mud Crutch 1, so I'm going to do this real quick. Um, the band, of course, originally formed in 1970. Um, Tom Petty, Mike Campbell, um, Ben Montench, um, Tom Leiden, and Randall Marsh, um, who all went on to uh, make this one single um, with this record company. They made the single, they released the single, the single done absolutely nothing, didn't even chart, so the record company split them all up. They put Tom Petty, Mike Campbell, and Ben Montench into the Heartbreakers, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, um, leaving the rest of Mud Crutch to slowly fade into the forgotten original members. However, in 2007, Tom Petty brought the original band back together, the original lineup. They made their first album, released it in 2008, and it done very well. And hey, Mud Crutch is back together. Yes. Not that anyone really knew who they were in the first place, but yes, they're back. <laughs> so anyway, um, the first album, of course, is brilliant. The first album I absolutely loved, as I say, got an 8.5 out of 10, which is a great score, great album. And here they are, Finally, no one knew whether they were coming back or not, I don't think, with a new album. I think originally they were going to record it last year in 2015 and get it out for 2015. But I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, the album got delayed to come out in 2016 instead. But anyway, it's here. And I, you know, I, I mean, I only got into Mud Crutch pretty recently. But um, I didn't have a clue that there was going to be a Mud Crutch 2. So I'm really pleased there is one. Um, so anyway... Um, all the tracks on here are written by members of the band. Um, not all of them are by Tom. The ones which aren't by Tom, um, say like the ones that are by, I don't know, Leiden, um, he'll actually sing his song and stuff, so it's pretty cool. 
But um, they are all original pieces on this album, which is cool. Because the first album had a few covers on. And generally I felt the covers were the better songs on the album, which isn't a great thing. But I, I still love that first album. It's still great. But anyway, let's get started. The first track up is called Trailer. And it isn't. it means trailer is in a... A uh, car trailer, you know, a trailer, a motorhome, a uh, caravan kind of thing. Um, not trailer as in a sneak preview kind of thing. Um, this one here is written and sung by Tom Petty. And it's a fun foot-tapping opening track. It's actually probably my second favourite track on the album. So it's a fantastic opener. It has a great harmoni har harmonica on the start, which just sounds great. Um, I love the chorus where Tom sings this line where he goes, I gave it all to you, babe. Really cool, really fun, catchy chorus there. Great vocals. The lyrics are pretty simple, as I say. It's all about, you know, um, this trailer. You know, he's singing, you know, I gave it to you, babe, it's yours. You know, he's singing about this lover, you know, a girlfriend or something. I don't know. Um, he's singing about a partner, uh, you know, saying how he gave it all to her, this trailer. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, if someone gave me a trailer, it'd be like, it's a trailer, man. Get over yourself, but... <laughs> As I say, the lyrics are pretty simple, but fun. There's nothing wrong with them. They're good. Um, has a great guitar solo in it as well, and I love the bass action in this. Great. And, of course, that's Tom as well, because Tom Petty is one of the greats on the bass, I think. A very underrated bass player. But I love this song. going to be a 9 out of 10 for this song. Great track. Then we get a track called Dreams of Flying. Another Petty track, another singing track, and generally, this song here probably would get a 9 out of 10 as well, because it is a fantastic song. Issue I have with this song is it feels very similar, it has a very similar beat to the first track. It doesn't flow well. Um, I think a slower song, I think they should have swapped this around with the next song, Beautiful Blue. They should have swapped these two tracks around because it would have been nice for the album to tone down a bit and then pick up again um, for this song. But anyway, it kind of just goes straight into the next song like that. And I don't know, it just didn't feel like it flowed very well. It was like, are we in another song here or is this song just taking a pause now we gone into another? section of the song so anyway it's a still a great song though um really amazing vocals from tom on this one um really great catchy chorus again um the lyrics are a bit simple again you know scared of flying <laughs> or when well, scared of flying dreams of flying he's dreaming about flying and um all that kind of stuff you know you can probably predict the lyrics for most of this but it's a fun song nothing long wrong with the lyrics are still really great really fun um, but yeah, as I say, you know, it's, um, just doesn't flow off of the song Trader very well. Um, but, uh, try, taking the song as a whole, it's a fantastic song, so I still want to give it a high mark, because I love the song. I really don't want to sound too negative on it. But, just because tr it sounds so similar to Trader, I can't give it a 9, because I would have given it a 9. But I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So an 8 out of 10, um, for Dreams of Flying. And then we get the track Beautiful Blue, which is another Tom Petty song. <laughs> <laughs> and another one where he sings, and this is a slower song, so this one has a much better flow, a much better vibe. It goes into this song a lot better. Um, has a really nice guitar riff going on in the background as well to um, balance the song out a bit, um, which sounds really great. And it's the first time you really hear the piano on this song. You know, it is there, it is um, on the previous two songs, but um, of course the other instruments overshadow it so much. Um, you can't hear the piano very well. But this is the first one we're going to piano really starts to come through and it sounds really good it's really nice soft vocals from tom which are really good the lyrics again pretty simple singing about a woman who he loves and he's talking about how you know uh, how how he feels about her and how much he loves her and stuff and he's singing i want to dress you up in a bit beautiful blue i don't know what that means <laughs> i don't know whether it's um, a metaphor for something or whether it's a beautiful blue is in a beautiful blue dress i want to put you in a beautiful blue dress make you look like cinderella or something i don't know but <laughs> the lyrics are pretty simple again pretty safe but really cool love the chorus it's the chorus is pretty you know just pretty easy it's just him singing that line i want to dress you up in a beautiful blue it sounds really good really like this song eight out of ten good song there then we get on to the first song, which isn't by Tom Petty. This is by Randall Marsh, and of course he takes the lead vocals. But then, of course, Tom does come in um, for bits on this song as well. But anyway, we'll get to that. Um, but the vocals are really good on this one, really good. Um, you know, I know that some people will probably be disappointed. It's like, no, it's not Tom singing. It's like, hey, come on, take a step back. It's really good vocal performance still, though. Um, and I really think this could be my favourite song on the album. This track is generally great. Um, has so much on it, some great guitar work, sounds fantastic. 
as I say, Tom comes in for the chorus on this song and sings that with Randall, um, which sounds fantastic. I'm going to give Beautiful World a 9 out of 10. Great track. And then the next track up is called I Forgive It All, which is a back to Petty, another Petty song. Much slower, calmer song. Um, yeah, maybe. I, the thing which I... Not a big fan of this song. I like really slow kind of acoustic tracks like this. But um, I, I don't think this is a very good vocal performance from Tom. And I hate to say it because I love Tom Petty. I think he's a great vocalist, a great singer. But generally, I don't think that this is one of his best vocal performances. Maybe one of his worst that I've heard from him, unfortunately. Um, however, the song is good. It's a good catchy song. I love the acoustics. And his vocals aren't, you know, they're not bad. And they're not weak I'd say they're weak vocals for Tom, for Tom's standards. Let's say that because he's a great singer and I don't want to put him down too much. Um, but, you know, they're not weak the whole way through the song. There's some good moments on it. So I do like the song, but weakest track so far. So I'm going to give that a seven. Then we move on to the second side of the album. So if you bought the vinyl record like me because you're a retro vinyl nerd um, <laughs> then you have to go then this is the point where you actually have to pick up your physical copy and go <clears throat> like that <clears throat> okay we're on side two um, and side two opens up with a track called The Other Side of the Mountain um, which is a Tom Lennon song and he takes um, lead vocals again um, with Tom coming in on the chorus again and um, they kind of take it in turns to sing the verse so Tom uh, Lennon will go first They'll come and do the chorus together. Tom Petty do the next verse, and then they'll do the chorus again, and Lee Dinner come back. Blah, 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 blah. You guys get the picture. Um, so, much faster song, and I really love the vocals on this one again. It's like, again, you know, I've got to stress it to people. Um, you know, I know it's not Tom singing every track, and I know it's better when Tom does, obviously, because we know and love Tom um, for his vocal performance, but the other members of this band can bloody well sing good. And Leiden has a great vocal performance on this album. Sounds incredible. Fast song, which sounds really fun. And yeah, I like it a lot. I'm going to give this track an 8 out of 10. Fun song there. And then we get to the song Hope. Which I hate to say is my least favourite track on this album. And I, it's a Tom Petty one again. And it's a slightly slower song with a similar beat to The Other Side of the Mountain. Just a bit slower, I think. Um... But the song just doesn't do much for me. It has some great guitar moments on it still. It's a great vocal performance from Tom. And the lyrics are kind of fun on this one, I guess. I quite like them. But, um, you know, it's good for about a minute to a minute and a half, this song. And then when you realise the song isn't going to change, it's not going to do much. You kind of get a bit bored with it. And it's unfortunate because it's a pretty long song as well. So it's a bit like... I still like it. It's a good song. So I'm going to give this track 6 out of 10. Then we get a track called Welcome to Hell. I mean, come on, that just sounds fun. I mean, you, you know, you hear that song title and you go, mm -hmm, this is going to be cool. And the second side of this record really suffers compared to the first side of the record. But this is the one point, apart from the opening track, this is the one point where you go, this is rocking, I like this, this is fun. So anyway, yeah, this is a Ben Montage song, which is interesting, pretty cool. He done one of the better ones on the last album, I think. There. I'm pointing towards where my records, where I keep my Tom Petty Mad Crutch records, but they're all over here. Um, but anyway, um, he takes lead vocals, of course, um, which are brilliant, brilliant vocal performance. Um, really interesting start. You kind of hear this kind of sound, which really doesn't sound like... What's my head? Um, <laughs> really doesn't sound like a Mud Crutch thing. So Mud Crutch are really country, and the start kind of sounds like something you'd hear at the start of a Pink Floyd song. It sounds a bit proggy. You know, Gen early Genesis, Peter Gabriel style, and it's like... Ooh, this is pretty different, pretty cool. Um, so I really like that. That was brilliant, brilliant start to it. Had a really cool, fun beat throughout it. Real nice rocking track. I really like it. Um, just a really fun song. I love the piano beat. Tom comes in for the chorus as well, which is great. Really like this song. 8 out of 10 for Welcome to Hell. Great track there. And then we get a track called Save Your Water, um, which is another Tom Petty song again. More easy listening, fun song here, I think. Um, the lyrics are a bit simple again here, um, but I really love the vocals a lot on this one. Um, has some good guitar moments as well. And yeah, I like this song, but not huge amounts to this song. I just, I, I like it quite a bit, I guess. So I'll give this one a 7 out of 10. And we might get the Mike Campbell song, um, which is interesting because he does do some vocals on it, but you get nearly 
I think you do get every member of the band singing a line here in this song, which is really cool. So you get everyone. It's kind of hard to pick up who's who, who's singing what part, apart from Tom. You know, I mean, Tom's voice is so recognisable. But um, it's a it's a good song. I, I enjoy this one. It's a more rocking song, I guess. I love the small pauses in between it where it kind of slows down and you just get the vocals and then it'll come back up. Um, so that's really cool. It um, has another cool guitar solo in it. Um, but, yeah. This one's pretty interesting. Oh, Victim of Circumstance. Sorry, I don't think I said the name in the song. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a good song. So I am going to give this one a 7 out of 10. And then we're on the last track, Hungry Hungry No More, which is another Tom Petty song. Of course, we have to close, close with Tom Petty. Um, uh, again, very similar feelings towards the last two tracks. I just think it's a good song. Um, a nice slow, chilled out vibe song for the end of the album. Um, takes a bit more time for the vocals to come in on this track because it's quite a long song. But I do like it when they come in. They come in really nice. They fit well. Um, I like how the song slowly gets a bit louder and builds a bit more tension throughout um, the song as it goes on. But, yeah, as I say, I, I, I enjoy this one. I think it's a good track. So I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10 as well. So anyway, now let's have a look at the album artwork. And, of course, we can mark that out of 10 as well to add on to our score. Um, so then, of course, this is a gatefold, but I haven't taken it out of the shrink, so I wanted to keep the sticker. Um, but what we can do is we can look at the CD, because the CD all the way over here um, is a digipack as well, and it has the same gatefold, so it's all good. But anyway, here is the vinyl, and um, there's a little sticker, which I had to keep. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and then we're going to go on the back for a very plain-looking, very boring back cover, which I don't like. Um final record itself here it is on a uh, reprise uh, label down let me pull the record out uh, you can see how nice and new this looks because that's awesome <laughs> um slide that back in um the last album of mud crutch rich got cd with it and this one here you don't even get a download code so a little bit disappointing there but i did buy the um I did buy the CD, of course. It doesn't matter to me, really. But um, you get this cut-out thing here, which is pretty cool, I guess. Pretty cool. A little bit random. But, you know, I don't get too excited about that because it really only makes up for the fact that they were lazy and just gave the record a plain white sleeve. So it, that cut-out really doesn't do much for me. Um, so the album artwork itself, I like the cover. I actually do like the cover. It's a pretty cool cover. But the insert is kind of... Pointless, really. And I might as well just put it on the record. The back cover just sucks. It's horrible. And now let's have a look at the CD um, gatefold there. So that's what you get in the gatefold. And really, that picture does nothing for me. I don't know what this is, whether they recorded the album here or something. It might actually say in here somewhere. I haven't taken the time to read it. With the CD, you actually get the same little insert there. Um, it's textured, so that's cool. But um, album artwork-wise... I would give it a solid 5 out of 10 because it doesn't do anything for me. But I like the cover a bit, so I don't want to be too harsh. So I'm going to bump it up to... Stay. I'm going to bump it up to a 6 out of 10 for the album artwork. So I do like the cover. It's pretty cool. Mud Crutch's covers are always so kind of weird and funny. I like them. I mean, come on. You, you get that? A guy with no face who looks like the sheriff of some western town. And then you get two bears. One looking like it's going to fight this one and this one here looks like it's a bit drunk looks like it's about to fall over i mean come on that's such a cool cover um but anyway now what i've done is i've added up all of the scores from the 11 songs i'm pretty sure it's 11 songs yep 11 songs and then added on of course the um the score which i gave for the album artworks so and then divided it by 12 because i've given it 12 scores and that's going to give me overall a 7.5 for this album so 7.5 for mud crutches mud crutch 2 um, now let's head over to the album ranking board and put it on there. So then, of course, here we are over with the album ranking board. And here is the slip for Mud Crutch's Mud Crutch 2 there with a 7.5 on the end. So then 7.5, we've got Peter Gabriel 1 here, Car, his first album, at 7.4. So it is just beating that out. So I'm going to put Mud Crutch 2 right... There's, yeah, I'll put it in the middle a bit because Mud Crutch 1 is in the middle, up there with an 8.5, so Mud Crutch 2 can sit almost directly underneath it, so, oh, doesn't want to stick, 
There we go. So the Mud Crutch one has beaten it out by a whole one point, as Mud Crutch one is on an 8.5. So I definitely do think that that is the better of the two Mud Crutch albums. Um, the other two albums which have beat Mud Crutch 2 out is Eric Clapton's I Still Do, Eric Clapton's new album, um, with an 8.3, and Eric Clapton's Back Home with a 9.2, and Derek and the Domino's Layla are at 9.4. Jeez, I don't know if anything's ever going to beat that one. Uh, but anyway, um, Mud Crutch 2 has managed to beat out Peter Gabriel's first album, Car, um, Lindsay Buckingham's Go Insane, Paul McCartney's McCartney, George Harrison's 33 and a third, Phil Collins' Face Value, The Who Face Dances, and right down here, if you can just see it, John Lennon and Yoko Ono sometime in New York City. And I don't know if anything's ever going to get worse than that one. So anyway, yes, of course, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. 7.5 for this album. It's a great album. Um, definitely a fantastic release for this year. Great album for Tom. Um, really did enjoy this album. It's a great album. You have to go check it out if you haven't already. Also, I want to throw another shout out out there to um, Eric Clapton's I Still Do, because that was also a fantastic release um, from last week as well. So if you haven't checked that out, you need to go hear that as well. So, yeah, must do albums there. Them two are brilliant. So uh, go enjoy them, because I've enjoyed them a lot. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a message. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. It's a beautiful world. It's a holy